many confuse faith not to you who are pleased when someone compliments the depth of, depth of your faith. Many confuse faith with a type of in intoxication. There's a type of intoxication similar to all that's nothing but delusion. Faith means, however, just the opposite, complete sobriety from any form of intoxication. When most people in the world talk about the mind of faith, they don't think it's anything more than kissing Buddha's ass. Do what you like with, with the others, but at least give me a first class ticket to paradise. Prayers like that have got nothing to do with the mind of faith. Faith means clarity and purity. Mind means the single mind that encompasses the three worlds. So having faith means clarifying and purifying the, own, the one mind of the three worlds. The mind of faith means truly becoming clear about your own mind. Faith means being clear and pure. It means being at ease. But some people get confused about this as well and they think faith is about getting worked up so they try so they try with all their might to do so until they realize that it's not so easy to get truly worked up then they just act as if they were in old times people were swept up in awe when they heard that Amitabha Buddha would come to them in the last hour to pick them up that's the same as being mistook by a fox Everyone wants to go to paradise, but have you ever really seen it? If you think you have, you must have been mistaken. There are people who want to live as long as possible. Any religion that offers this will do. What they have to believe in doesn't matter at all. That's how they waste their lives away. When someone, when some new re religious group starts picking up huge numbers of followers, Suddenly, everybody thinks there must be something true about it. The number of followers doesn't determine if a religion is good. If it were simply a matter of who had the largest number, doesn't the club of ordinary people have the most members? No, it's the bacteria. There's even more of them. Aren't a huge pile of crazy ideas dumped on us, hum on us humans? Ideas that go by the names of faith, satori, and so on. We ordinary people have to let go of our upright attitude. Faith means purity and clarity. Wind and waves have to calm down. Faith doesn't mean praying for good health, good business, harmony in the family and well-being for your children. Faith means pure clarity. The pure clarity in which the mud set settles and excitement calms. It means nothing besides completely coming to your senses. Faith isn't something secondhand. Buddha isn't something secondhand. If it's not about your problem here and now, it's not it's got nothing to do with faith. Let's put let's put it off until later. You can't dismiss the problem like this. The question is whether whether you here and now truly can see Buddha's body and hear his teaching. The way isn't about asking others, it's about returning to yourself. If you think Amitabha Buddha is hanging out over there on the other side while you hear running off your recitations, then sooner or later he'll be going back to the, to the west at the same time that you're floating off to the east. You will miss each other entirely. Some call Buddha's name as if they wanted to flatter him with their faithful hearts. Others believe they practice sazen in order to get satori. As long as only, as as long as it's only revolving around you, as an individual, it's got nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma. Your little personal problems aren't interesting. The universal whole is the problem here. No matter how big your satori is, or how important, charitable, or good you are, if it doesn't concern any. If it doesn't concern anything besides you as an individual, it's merely a scene in the play of self-reception. Namu means taking refuge in that which lies beyond the individual. If the subject and object are separate, it's not the Buddha Dharma. In the Buddha Dharma, you don't even use the word Buddha. Okay, that was chapter 29.
So, uh, a quick summary about this chapter would be that in this chapter, Kodo Sawaki compared um, the traditional way of having faith to a faith in accordance with uh, true practice and the manifestation of the Buddha Dharma. Um, in this chapter, he also points to different or wrong concepts, for example, the chanting of Amitabha Buddha in order to go to paradise. Um, in this chapter, Koto Sawaki disagrees to the concepts, to the concept um, of a realm outside of this present moment, uh, for example, a place, place like paradise. He says that with different quotes, like for example, in old times, people were swept up in awe when they heard that Amitabha Buddha would come to them in the last hour to pick them up. That's the same as being missled by a fox. <clears throat> and he also points to the fact that paradise is nothing but a construct of thoughts, making the believer hope for something which is in itself nothing more than a sad wish for the end of suffering. Um, and as I said before, the main topic about this on this chapter is faith. Um, Kodo Sawaki compares um, something which I would call more traditional faith with faith in accordance to true practice. So I thought, um, since I have grown up in a Christian-based society, I would like to analyze uh, what faith is in a Christian uh, point of view and try to compare it to the faith which um, is needed to walk the path of the Buddha Dharma as Kodo Sawaki describes it. So I did some research uh, since I didn't know exactly um, the, the origin where faith in Christianity comes from. Um, so I found out that at the core of every Christian tradition lies faith in Jesus Christ. And around that um, commonly accepted concept is that there is faith needed to believe in God's promise, um, to trust in the promises faithfulness and there's faith needed for realizing on God's character and uh, his faithfulness to act. Some definitions I found um, in the Bible um, on faith would be faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen, which would uh, mean more defined that you need to believe in the existence of God and you need to believe in the existence of a transcendent domain which God administers as his kingdom and you need to believe in his benevolence um, of the plan for humankind. Another common accepted belief is that God is the creator of all existence and in the center of this creation is humankind um, and humankind is not capable of doing good action on its own um, due to the original sin which um, was brought up by Adam and Eve which were kicked out of paradise as far as I know um, and humans depend on the love and kindness of Jesus to be saved and to receive an eternal life after death. So, so much about the uh, um, stuff I researched about. Um, from my own observation from Christianity, Christianity makes me think that the most important aspect of Christianity is the belief um, of the end of suffering after death. Um, and for this kind of um, salvation after death, faith is like the entrance fee to be paid for, to be paid with. Um, and the Christian faith seems to have evolved around um, the belief in God and Jesus Christ and their kindness towards human beings. Um, the belief seems to be fueled by making the believers feel guilty, um, guilty for the most basic step in human life which is everyone who is born is basically guilty and the reason why we're all guilty is that we are the direct um, descendants of two people which are Adam and Eve um, and they caused 
humans to be separated from God. And this guilt we all carry in us can only be forgiven by God because humans don't have the power to forgive themselves or to save themselves. So this forces humans to believe in God. Otherwise, there won't be any salvation. Um, and salvation in Christianity means basically the reunion with God. So faith in Christianity is the tool and the only way to be saved. It's saved into paradise, um, which represents the end of suffering. Um, and this has to do with the powerlessness and the helplessness of humans to save themselves through their own efforts. So the help of God is required and the belief towards God, towards Him, is like the entrance fee which needs to be paid during one's lifetime and then after death um, one is granted into paradise. So much about Christianity. I uh, also did some research and gave some thoughts about the type of faith we need in Buddhism or more exactly the type of um, faith Kodo Sawaki talks about. I um, might need to mention first that there are many different sects of Buddhism and um, many of the Buddhist sects have um, something, of, of forms of faith which are very similar to the one in Christianity. For example, he talks about um, Amitabha Buddha and his salvation after death for the believer but then some other sects also worship stupas etc so this is not the faith I'm going to talk about um, in the sects of Buddhism where awareness based meditation practice is of high value um, it's understood differently um, faith in Japanese is Shin and the kanji looks like this So, in Buddhism, um, faith um, is a concept of serene commitment to the practice of the Buddha Dharma and trust in enlightened beings' teachings like Buddhas or Bodhisattvas. Um, faith in Buddhism also exists in relation to concepts like, for example, the efficacy of karma and the possibility of enlightenment. In Soto Zen, for example, um, Dogen believed that Sazen is not only the path to enlightenment, but also the expression of, of Buddha nature. So Dogen urged the practitioner to have faith that the Buddha nature already lies within oneself. Um, and faith is also part of the three essentials for meditation practice. They are namely great faith, great doubt, and great resolve or determination. Um, keeping these three essentials um, in balance in one's own practice and not letting dominate one over the other two um, keeps us on the right path and carries our practice. Um, great faith, for example, is understood as um, the faith that our own mind is capable of realizing Buddha nature as said before so faith in Zen basically means faith in yourself great doubt would mean um, to be curious and to do investigation for example not trusting teachers and scriptures blindly but to do research and um, constantly penetrate and recheck your belief system. And then create doubt. Um, no, this was create doubt. So, and great doubt also means um, that great doubt, for example, arises from, from the questions of life which cannot be solved with, with answers, for example, as in a koan. Um, and then through practice, we, we structure these questions. 
and great de determination um, usually arises from great doubt. Um, which means although sometimes we face obstacles along the way, um, we need to have the conviction to overcome these um, obstacles and in order to experience our true nature. So to compare the key differences, in my opinion, between Christianity and Buddhism, in Christianity the faith which is needed seems to me more like, like a helpless scream for the end of suffering, um, without actually feeling capable on our own to, to face life or death. And so in this, this helpless search um, of the mind, of the mind's wish for, for existence without suffering, any kind of God or, or story which has more or less like logical sense is good enough to believe in. There is the saying that religion is opium for the masses. Um, so, just like opium, um, lets faith lets the suffering one forget about the world's misery. But Kodo Sawaki says that faith doesn't mean brain for good health, good business, harmony in the family, and well-being for your children. For me, faith in Zen is more like, like the actual knowing um, that there is a way out of suffering. Um, it's an expression of having courage to, to face and accept life or death in whatever form it might occur. Um, and faith is also realizing the own Buddha. Ah, the faith to realize one's own Buddha nature is, is certainly clearly different um, to the common concepts of faith in other religions. And when, if religion is opium for the masses, then I would say that, that Zen is the end of the addiction for opium, so to say. There, in this chapter there was also a quote I quite liked, I'm going to read it again. There are people who want to live as long as possible. Any religion that offers this will do. What, what they have to do, what they have to believe in doesn't matter at all. That's how they waste their lives away. So I was thinking a bit about this quote um, and I did some research and, um, about religions again. Um, I found out that Christianity is, is like the main religion in the world with 31.5% then there's Islam and then there are many other religions to follow. But the majority of people, they tend to believe in um, the religion they have been introduced to earlier in their life. So, and what most religions have in common is a type of God, which, or one God, which would be monotheism, or many gods, which would be polytheism. And the God always seems to be the judge about granting entrance into heaven or hell. And around, uh, around this, there are endless stories depending on, on the type of religion which is involved. Um, and I think this is what Kodo Savaki means um, when he says what they have to believe in doesn't matter at all. Because uh, the human mind always just to seem to be interested in hope or betterment in the future, but not in, in the, not into the present moment. So no matter how obscure the stories are, um, people tend to believe in them um, as, so, as the, so many different religions all around the world show us. And in fact, I actually got a bit shocked after having done the research about um, Christian, Christian faith um, when I did the comparison just before. Although I've grown up in a Christian society, I never really understood why I was meant to, be meant to believe in God. That was something which was told to me at a very young age, when my parents, for example, took me to church or I had the, um, I don't know, the, there's like Christian lessons in school, etc. So, 
and for a very long time in my life, I actually didn't question what, what was that faith all about. I just did accept it. And now after having practiced for a few years, um, I, I actually clearly see how obscure the reasoning is for the faith in God. Um, for example, when, when you analyze Christian faith from the perspective of the three fundamental truths of existence, which are like impermanence, emptiness and suffering, then Christian faith or Christianity doesn't seem to, to me, it doesn't seem to be any different um, to, for example, a modern approach of gaining wealth and status for oneself. Okay, so much about um, chapter 29. Tsugini Nana Shou, Heiji Gojuni, Gojuni 